Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Jeffrey Alexander from the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I'm going to present uh, uh, this study published in, in, in CGH uh, on a randomized controlled trial of swallowed aerosolized fluticasone in the treatment of eosinophilic esophagitis. This has been funded by a grant from the Fitterman Foundation, and this slide shows the uh, multiple co-authors. Eosinophilic esophagitis is a disease we really didn't start looking for in adult patients until after the year 2000. It's a disease where uh, patients develop eosinophils, which is a type of white blood cell. Uh, these eventually develop in their esophagus, which can be associated with a symptom of solid food sticking. They may also get some chest pain. Eosinophils are the allergic cells. You find them in the nose in people with seasonal allergies, in the lungs, in people with asthma. And we recently discovered that they can involve the esophagus and lead to an increased uh, frequency of this disease. Now, we've actually shown in Olmstead County that, that this instance of eosinophilic esophagitis is increased 30-fold over the past 15 years. Now, some of that's due to increased recognition of a disease we really didn't, uh, didn't know much about, but a lot of it probably is increasing in true incidence as well. Swallowed fruticasone, which is a medication used for uh, asthma, where we inhale it into the lung, we use this in a swallowed fashion to treat eosinophilic esophagitis, and it's the most commonly used drug in this country. However, there are no placebo-controlled trials of this drug showing it to be a benefit in adult patients. The aims of our study were to evaluate the clinical efficacy of swallowed fruticasone on patient's symptoms, as well as on the histology or the eosinophil counts in their esophagus. We also want to look at the side effects or tolerability of the medication. The study was set up that the patients would meet with our study coordinator. They were then randomized in a double-blind fashion, meaning the doctors didn't know which drug they got and the patients didn't know which drug they got. 21 patients were treated with the active drug and 21 patients were treated with a similar uh, dummy uh, inhaler. There were a fair number of dropouts uh, from the study in both groups. Now, none of those dropouts were a result of side effects or a failure of the medication to work. Most of those were, were related to personal issues or primarily travel uh, to Rochester, Minnesota in the middle of the winter. What we found uh, here is shown in this slide, the per protocol response is those that actually completed the entire study, the intention to treat analysis was quite similar. Histology, meaning the eosinophils in the esophagus, resolved in 68% of the patients uh, treated with fluticasone and in none of the placebo patients, which was a very strongly positive result and statistically significant. However, when we look at symptoms, the resu results weren't so impressive. 47% of the patients had a complete symptom response with the drug, but 40% of the placebo patients had a complete symptom response as well over the same time period. When we look at the side effects, the, both uh, the placebo and the drug were reasonably well tolerated. There was no difference in the group uh, overall with respect to side effects. However, 26% of the patients treated with the swallowed Fluticasone did develop an oral yeast infection that was not statistically significant related to the small size of the study, but certainly is something uh, to be noted. In summary, we think fluticasone uh, leads to a histologic response of the eosinophils in the esophagus uh, that is quite impressive. However, this did not lead to a symptomatic response, i.e. did not lead to resolution of their dysphagia. The, the therapy was well tolerated, but was associated with some oral candidiasis. Uh, we speculate that the Mayo dysphagia questionnaire may not be an accurate tool at assessing their uh, symptom response. Uh, we also speculate that possibly some patients may continue to have dysphagia symptoms despite resolution of their esophageal eosinophilia related to fibrosis with some loss of compliance uh, or distensibility of their esophagus. Thank you for your time.